Hello and welcome back. As you can see today, we're going to be talking about how to use an acoustic electric guitar into the Boss ME80. Okay? And you can see the so using an acoustic guitar with the Boss ME80. Now I'm going to post a picture of like a screenshot of of the editor, the patch itself. I'll put that in the comments below um, so that you can see exactly how I set it up. I didn't think um, that the SIM was going to work all that well. There's an acoustic amp SIM uh, on the ME80, but I, I wasn't 100% certain what it was going to sound like. There's an acoustic SIM, which is, you know, a, an imitation of an acoustic guitar that doesn't work all that well for me. So, and I've got an acoustic, so I don't really need a SIM. So, but I was a little curious about the acoustic amp SIM. So I wanted to try it out. I plugged my acoustic in this months ago. I was doing some recording. And uh, I had been using, obviously, you know, when you're recording an acoustic guitar, you put a mic or two in front of it just to make sure you can get really good sound. Well, I wanted to see if I could plug it into the ME80 to get a good, you know, a boosted sound into my recording software from my mixer and all the other fancy little gear that I have over here. So I wanted to see what it was going to sound like. Um, and I still wind up putting a mic in, in front of the guitar. And then I'll just record two, I'll record them on two separate tracks. And then I'll just, um, I'll assign them, you know, left and right, or I'll assign them different effects to get a big broad sound out of it, right? And what you're going to hear first is, and this is not an expensive acoustic guitar, acoustic electric, it's not. It's an Ibanez Tallman. It was like 300 bucks when I bought it. So it's not really super expensive, but you can get a really good sound out of uh, by, you know, putting into the MDA, ME80 and then setting the patch the right way. And the acoustics uh, amp sim that I've got set up right now, I think I have, I have, no, there's no delay. The reverb that you're hearing is the reverb from my Virtualizer 3D, much better reverb. We talked about, I've mentioned that once before. But you get a really good, yeah, kind of full guitar sound. <laughs> I'm going to add, um, ordinarily I would put, you know, a lot of people will put chorus on an acoustic. I'm not really crazy about chorus. I talked about that last time, too. But what I wind up doing is I'll put the harmonizer on. I'll turn the harmonist on in the patch. And if you set the harmony to zero, no matter what key you set it to, if you set the harmony to zero, you'll get sort of a detune, right? And what that does is it takes your original signal and then detunes it by three or four cents. I'm not really sure what it is and then delays it slightly, right? To simulate, it's like a non-cycling chorus, and that's what I like about it. So, and this is with the detune turned on. It's a big, you know, full sound. I really like that. a lot. Let me pull a little of the reverb off. It's a little deep. I gotta have reverb when I play. Eh, slightly better. That's a little better. And, and, well, and it sounds really great for strumming, right? And you get a big fat sound out of it, you know? Um, it's, I, I don't know exactly what they did as far as signal processing went for the acoustic amps in, but they did a pretty damn good job because it does, it does faithfully kind of recreate or represent my acoustic guitar tone just from my ears, right? That's what I hear from my ears. If I don't have the acoustic plugged in, it sounds, you know, big and full. And sometimes when you're using an acoustic amp sim or a, an amp sim in general, it can kind of thin your tone out a little bit, but this doesn't do that. It sounds really good. It's drunk, and it sounds really good for, for finger finger picking stuff too um Thank you. 
I could play this morning, then it probably would say it sounds really good. But I'm just kind of blowing a few notes here. I haven't done any warm ups. I usually do about 30 minutes to an hour of, of scales and warm ups and dexterity exercises to kind of warm the old hand up for the for the fretboard. But it sounds really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the delay. I have a delay set in the patch. It's not turned on right now. Right now, you're hearing. Um, you'll see it in the patch. I've got the compressor, a boost. Now the boost just adds a little bit more lift to the guitar. It, there's no gain on it whatsoever. Um, I wanted absolutely no gain on anything, so I kind of turned everything down um, so that there's no gain on it whatsoever. I've got the harmonist on, I've got compressor to kind of even smooth out, you know, the highs and lows, you know, the, the, the soft and loud parts. Um, and I've got the harmonist on uh, just because I just like it so much. We'll turn the delay on and we'll let you hear a little bit. This is a piece called um, Echoes from the Ice. I released this uh, on my first CD, and it, with the delay on, it sounds like, let me add a little bit more volume to the delay so you can hear the difference. It's really, really good. I really like the delay when, when it's added to it. So we'll go up to here. <coughs> All right. You hear that? So. <laughs> just a beautiful reverb it's a this is like a medium hall reverb that I've got set on it right now it's really really nice I really really like it and with the with the with the delay added on I do that sometimes I don't like using delay often on acoustic guitar but you know what I use the delay in a, in to sort of simulate if if a keyboard was holding chords now right while I was playing um, I wouldn't have delayed on it right well what the delay allows me to do is to let those chord tones ring through so that they sort of weave into one another. And here's a good example of that. This song was written for my son, Christopher. Um, it's called um, Little Boy Blue. And I wanted to try to simulate the feel, not the sound, but the feel of bagpipes, right? There's always a note droning on a bagpipe, right? So, and what I wanted to do was to drone a few notes to imply chords um, that, th and I'm using open strings to do it. I don't know if you can see my hands all that well, but I'm using open strings, the open D and G, to drone certain notes so that they affect the, the next chord shape, right? So we're gonna start here with a G. So the G and the D, the open strings, they actually work, but we're gonna move down, and each time I move down, it, if, if the delay is in place, it lets those initial chord tones ring through while I'm playing. So let me shut up and play it. those chord note those chord tones to just continue to ring a little bit the reverb does that for me too obviously but the delay allows the notes to blend together so that the chords sound fuller and and you know so when I'm moving from one to another I'm still getting the previous notes on the delay from the previous chord 
so they they blend together really really nice now the me 80 um i'm i'm not going to keep going over this don't really much care for the reverbs in the me 80 they're just a little two-dimensional for me so i use my my virtualizer 3d to get really you know like next level um, reverb sounds so and that's what's going on here um that was with the um that was with the delay turned on and we'll turn the delay off now when i'm strumming i don't necessarily want to have if i'm picker, finger picking then i'll have a little bit of delay on and and it'll be you know it'll sound pretty good when i'm strumming though i'll turn the delay off and i'll rely a little bit more on the reverb to let those chord tones you know kind of ring out so <laughs> guitar doesn't lose anything going into the me 80 um, I've got it set in such a way that I'm you know the thing about plugging an acoustic guitar into an acoustic amp is you get a ton of low end and you kind of have to be careful not to let it get out of control right that low end will you know it'll you, you'll 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 peak when you're recording that low end will cause it to peak so I don't want it to do that so what I did was on the acoustic amp sim I dropped the lows down about half of what they were um, from the you know the default setting because I don't want that to spike my recording software so you can hear the, the, the lows still sound really good That's gonna be it's gonna be a short one today. I just wanted to give a you know give you an idea of how the acu an acoustic electrical sound into the ME80. Now, if you've got a processor that's got an acoustic amp sim, then give it a shot. You know what I mean? If you're just gonna put it into a regular amp, it's not gonna work. Um, there's a lot more low end on an acoustic than there is a, you know on an electric. Naturally, though, that's natural. So uh, so you need to really look closely at where your lows are, where your low end is. Um, to make sure that you're not going to, you know, you're not going to uh, distort um, the, the low end on this one. If I put it in just, if I take this and I put it straight into my mixer over here, if I put it straight into my mixer, the low end is ferocious. I mean, it's ferocious. So I have to not do that. So I put it in the ME80 and I can better EQ it so that when it goes to the recording software, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to redline when I'm recording. So... Um, give it a shot. If you got an acoustic amp sim and an acoustic electric guitar, give it a shot. I still wind up, even though I'll put this, you know, I put this into the ME80, it's in its own channel, and then I'll put a mic in a different channel, and I'll split those left and right and record them on separate tracks. One track will record only the left, one track will only record the right, and then I'll bring them back to center and then EQ them differently and put different, you know, sort of effects on them and stuff. Ordinarily, and, and when I record, ordinarily, I have the reverb off. Reverb and delay are generally always off. The only thing, as an acoustic anyway. No effects on the acoustic whatsoever, including the harmonizer. I'm, I'm about 50-50. About half the time I'll leave it on and half the time I turn it off. Um, but I want to have, I want to be able to have the microphone that's sitting in front of the guitar. And, you know, at 45 degree angle from, from the sound hole should work fine. Um, occasionally I'll use two mics. I'll have one mic that's sitting in front of the guitar at a 45 degree angle and then I'll have another mic that is about three feet from the sound hole pointed directly at the sound hole and you'll it, that too will give you a really good um, big acoustic guitar sound. You don't want to thin out the acoustic guitar sound when it goes to the recording. 
So I'll sometimes use two mics plus I'll use the pickup, the piezo pickup, into the ME80 so that I wind up with a really, really good balance as far as the acoustic guitar. So, but I, I generally will keep all the effects off of at least one, you know, either left or right. Uh, one of them will be, com will be recorded completely dry, and then I'll add effects from my DAW, from my recording software. The other one, um, generally the one that's going into the ME80, the microphone will be completely dry, no effects whatsoever. The ME80 may have the harmonizer on it or the, the detune. Um, it mi I might put delay. Generally, I don't because I've got better delays in my DAW. Um, so I don't really worry about it all that much. But one, one guitar, one side, left or right, will always be completely dry when it goes into the, um, into the software, onto the recording. And then I'll add stuff to it after I'm done recording. So, But that's a quick... Uh, That's all we're going to do for today. Um, coming up next on the next one, uh, in the Facebook group that I'm in, there are a couple of guys in there that were asking questions about the difference between the harmonizer, the harmonist, and the pitch shifter. And so <clears throat> they're very different. They're different ideas, and they're used completely differently. Okay. So the next video I do is going to be the difference, explaining and understanding the difference between a harmonizer and a pitch shifter. Okay. Not going to go into that right now. Uh, that's a that's going to be a fairly long video. I'd like to keep this one short. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for today. Tune into the processor guy, and uh, you know, coming up, we're going to put some. We're going to have some really good stuff. We're going to talk about famous artists and their guitar tones. We're going to talk about you know ways to not fall into traps that we generally always fall into. You know, with using effects so that your sound is as good as it possibly can be. Um, and we're going to talk about, you know, there's going to be, a, I talked about it yesterday, we're going to have a section uh, or a couple of videos on how do they do that, which is, you know, how famous guitar tones got done in the studio. A lot of people think, like for instance on Money for Nothing by Dire Straits, a lot of people think that Mark Knopfler had a wah in a notch position, and that's how that guitar sound came about. But that's not true. He didn't have a wah set. We'll talk about what happened and how that tone wound up being so unique. It was something no one had done before, really, it, when it was an accident. He set the, the whole thing was an accident. That guitar tone was an accident. They didn't discover it until after they started listening back to the track and thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Let's just leave it the way it is and record it like that. So um, lots of, you know, lots of neat little tricks, little studio tricks. I'll teach you some things about how to record, you know what I mean, um, how to get, you know, the tips and tricks that the pros use to get really good sounds and recording ideas. Um, so it'll be uh, it'll be very cool. That's coming up. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Ah! All right, we'll see you. You guys be good out there.